Welcome to Medora Corporation's educational whiteboard series, Everything Wastewater, produced for engineers, system owners, management, and personnel to answer commonly asked questions about wastewater applications and Medora Corporation equipment. First on the list, how does a floating wastewater mixer mix a facultative or partial mix wastewater lagoon? Over the next three minutes or so, we'll discuss a few simple lagoon basics and how Medora's floating wastewater mixing equipment uses these basics to improve your lagoon system. So here we go. The water column in a wastewater lagoon can usually be split into three basic zones. The aerobic free water at the top, an intermediate facultative slurry transition layer, and the anoxic sludge blanket at the bottom. In the summertime, the aerobic free water will usually experience significant temperature stratification in the top two to three feet. In this warm, topmost layer, algae production will thrive and the increased photosynthetic activity will 1. Increase pH via dissolved carbon dioxide consumption and 2. Drive dissolved oxygen into supersaturation. Since temperature stratification acts as a significant barrier to natural mixing, much of the supersaturated dissolved oxygen is lost to the atmosphere instead of being used for beneficial digestion and treatment. Another important consideration involves the water-air interface. Lipid and protein films can form on the water surface to create a formidable gas transfer lid between the entirety of the water column and the atmosphere. This keeps in undesirable compounds such as H2S and methane from venting out of the lagoon into the open air, thus having a negative effect on the overall health of the lagoon. By understanding these basic lagoon characteristics, Medora's floating wastewater mixing equipment can improve treatment, resulting in better BOD and ammonia removal. Better treatment is better for everybody, and controlling how and at what depth water is being brought to the mixer are very important first step considerations for a successful mixing strategy. So let's take a quick look at the how of the mix. Floating wastewater mixers have adjustable intake hoses to set the mixing zone according to particular lagoon characteristics and objectives. This means they can safely mix water above the sludge and slurry layer without disrupting the sludge and slurry layer. This aerobic free water mix zone also means the supersaturated dissolved oxygen layer is mixed deeper into the lagoon water column where it can be put to good use by aerobic BOD and ammonia reducing bacteria. Effective long distance mixing also helps remove the lipid and protein surface film which then allows for greater gas transfer and healthier lagoon function. There is another mixing option called a dual mix, which creates a combined mix from two different depth zones in the lagoon. The dual mix main intake is always set three feet from the surface with an adjustable auxiliary intake hose that can be placed anywhere in the water column. By placing the auxiliary intake deeper in the water toward the sludge and slurry layers, it will slowly pull in anoxic bottom water and combine it with oxygen rich top water, and it does this at a treatment optimal ratio of one part anoxic water to 60 parts fully oxic water. This ensures all the oxygen demand needs to treat the incoming anoxic water are met. And a deeper auxiliary intake setting near the bottom can also stop any short circuiting flow between the inlet and the outlet of the lagoon. No short circuiting means longer detention time. Longer detention time means better BOD and ammonia reduction. Better BOD and ammonia reduction means better wastewater lagoon treatment, and better lagoon treatment starts with Medora's floating wastewater mixing equipment. For more information how Medora Corporation's wastewater mixing equipment can help make your wastewater better, please contact us at 866-437-8076 or through our website www.medoracode.com. Thanks for watching.